Ladies and gentlemen, Timothy Davis here. Sorry, I know I haven't posted a video in damn near forever, and I'm really, truly, ostensibly sorry about that. You may be disappointed anyway, as this video is not my usual subject matter of philosophy, religion, or technology. Today's video is going to be about Comcast. I'm going to be broadcasting some recorded call segments and ranting into your ear holes, so grip your knees and hold on tight, because I'm going in dry. One month ago, I moved into a new apartment, and since Comcast has a fucking nationwide goddamn bullshit monopoly, rather than switching providers, as I would have wanted to do, I had to transfer my Comcast service. I did what amounts to a self-install, which really just means I physically moved my existing modem to my new place and plugged it into the coax jack, which was already there, and then called the automated activation line. For this, I was charged $20 for my internet and TV service. Fine, okay, they're gouging me, but whatever. For a week and a half, everything worked fine, but then I started suffering intermittent connectivity, meaning that about every hour or two, my internet would drop out for five to ten minutes at a time. This is extremely frustrating when you're working from home and rely on the internet to do presentations, have conference calls, and generally get shit done. I called Comcast support and they verified the issue on their end. I validated that the issue existed everywhere in the house and that there were no problems with my coax jack, power supply, ethernet cable, or computer. This means that the issue must be quote-unquote upstream, as it were which means that the problem is on Comcast's end. The tech support guy agreed and said he'd send out a tech for me, although it'd take four days to get anyone out. Now, the rep said it would be free, but I've dealt with Comcast enough times that I knew enough I ought to record the call. I'll play for you the segment where he verifies that the tech will be out for free, but first I want to inform you that since Comcast records all calls and informs you of that fact in their IVR, my recording of the call constitutes dual-party consent, since both parties on the call are aware that it's being recorded, and thus, no law is being violated by my rebroadcasting my recording of this call. Have a listen. So, just to confirm... Uh... I, I won't be charged for having a technician out to check the line, right? For an outside business, no. Okay. Cool. Yeah, sounds good to me. Right, give me one moment to notate the account properly. Okay. So the tech shows up an hour after the scheduled appointment, checks the outside line, asks to come in and verify if the issue is resolved, double checks both my existing coax jacks to validate the solution, and then leaves. The tech was really quite rude while he was here, but I mostly left him to his business because I'd let someone spit in my face if it meant that I'd have my precious internet working again. So the problem is fixed and all seems well with the world, except that about a week later I check my bill and I see these charges. I've got a screenshot in the video so you can see it there, but it amounts to about $182 for what they called a failed self-install, failed video self-install kit, and wireless network setup. Now, I installed the service myself. There was no failure there. The Comcast line going into the apartment complex had a fault in it, but that had nothing to do with my install. Further, I did not need any help setting up my wireless network. It was still set up from before I moved. The tech and I never even discussed Wi-Fi. This means that the tech lied in his notes, so I call support. Support tells me that the tech claims to have installed a new coax jack, which he legally couldn't even have done without my landlord's permission, by the way. And he also claimed to have set up my connection, my wireless internet connection, and installed my connection the same way I did already. I tell the agent on the phone that everything is plugged into the same jack as before, nothing new has been installed, and my service was already set up. The tech was out to fix a problem with the Comcast copper going into the apartment not to install my service. The tech did not listen. I informed the tech that he can look into my technical support history and see that I had previously installed the service and did not need installation help, but needed help instead with the outside Comcast line. The tech still did not listen. The tech dropped me back into the main queue or something, but it just left me on hold for about an hour until I eventually hung up. I called back and spoke with a supervisor. Finally, here is the recording of that call. So, I would like to get these charges refunded because they are not valid charges. The tech claimed that he did things that he didn't do, and I can prove that he didn't do them. Okay, uh, the wireless network setup, I can see here that it is for free. The forty nine ninety five charge was, um, we also deduct $49.95, so it's for free. So it, the wireless network setup doesn't have a charge. So it okay. is the $50 HSD failed self-install and the failed video SIK. Mm -hmm. Um Check that. If you're looking into my account history, you should be able to see the logs with technical support where I called proving that my network was working and that the self-install was successful. Okay, let me check that for you. Okay, please stay on the line. Hello, thank you for waiting. Sure. 
okay, um, this is what I can do for you. Um, instead of removing those charges on the account, that is total of $82. What I can do is I can give you the free Blast Plus internet service for 12 months. Okay. So that means I wouldn't... What what would I be paying for for those 12 months if we did that? Because I can see here that you are paying $5 for 12 months. So um, we're going to deduct uh, $5 on your bill every month. And if you total it, it will be $60. No, that's not acceptable. So do you want the total of $82? Well, the the charges are $99.99 plus $32. Uh, no, it's not $99.99 because the wireless network setup is for free. Then the $99.99 that you are saying it's only fifty dollar because we give a forty nine ninety nine discount. So you are you are only charged fifty dollars. Uh, oh okay. Um so yeah, I, I'd like a, a credit on the account for eighty two dollars, please. Okay, so I'm going to apply the um free blast plus for twelve months and then I'm going to credit the remaining so that it will total of eighty two. So no, sixty dollar no, total. No, of that's that's not what I asked for. I asked for a credit of $82. Okay, because there's no way that we can we can remove those charges on the account. Well, then that's just issue a credit for what $82 we can do. directly. If you're not, you, that's fine okay. if you're not able to remove the charges, but if you issue a credit on the line for the same amount, that'll be just fine. Yes, there's no way that we can issue credit because of that. Um, because we can see that it is a valid charge on the account. Because no, we it's set not out a valid the charge. Mission, it doesn't mean, on, I, I it doesn't mean that we... Again. It's not a valid charge because, I made, as I made it very clear to you, you can see proof that it's not a valid charge in my account history, and I also have proof in the form of a recording with the agent that scheduled the service call for me. So that's okay. two ways that you can verify that it's not valid charges, that they're not valid charges. So... Okay. You can do that and verify that they're not valid charges, and then, as an exception, because clearly this is a mistake on either Comcast's end or the technician's end, you can issue the credit. There's no way that I can issue the credit, because even though it says failed self-installation, every time we send out a technician, there's a $50 charge for that. Well, I have a call recorded where the agent tells me in no uncertain terms that there will be no charge. So... You can give feedback to the employee. I don't. I don't you care. You can give feedback no, listen to the employee, to me. but listen there's no me. way that listen we can credit me. $80. You cannot bill me. I don't care if you give feedback to the employee. You cannot bill me for something that I did not authorize. You cannot tell me that it's free and then bill me anyway, and then tell me that you cannot unbill me or credit me for the bill. You can't do that. It's illegal. Do you understand? I apologize for that, but there's no way that I can credit the account. I'm $80. not going to pay value you, for something that I was told as, would be free. We value you as a customer. That's why I am trying to check what I can give you, what I can credit to the account. That's why I'm trying to remove the uh, the charge for the Blast Plus for 12 months. I I appreciate that. That's not what I want. I don't care about $5 a month. I care about the $82 that I'm being charged for something that didn't happen, for something that I can prove to you didn't happen, and that you can even verify on your end was impossible to have happened. Okay, we sent out the technician. So every time we send out the technician, there's a charge for that one. So even though there's a failed installation okay. kit or not, Here, but if I'm they gonna fix the problem... Hang on one second. I understand what you're saying. But so just I, to... I think that you're confused here. So let me make it very clear. I'm going to put this on speaker, and this is a recording of the call where I scheduled the technician to come out. Are you listening? Yes, go ahead. So just to confirm, uh, I, I won't be charged for having a technician out to check the line, right? Okay. Cool. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, so as you can see, I've got that call recorded, and the, the agent clearly said that I would not be charged for having the technician out. Now, I don't, I don't care if you have a policy that says that 
you have to charge for every time a technician comes out. I, the customer, did not agree to that. So you can't do that. You cannot promise me as a representative, you cannot have a representative promise me one thing and then give me something totally different that involves charging me $82 for nothing. Further, you said there's only a $50 charge for having a technician out, but I was charged 82 So I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about here. Okay? I don't care what your policy is. You need to refund that charge because I'm, I'm not going to pay it. Okay, I'll check what I can do for you, okay? Um, I'll investigate on this one, and I'll check. And I'll be calling you after 30 minutes to one hour. Can you please give me the best number to call you? My number is 858 But before you go, uh, can I get your, your name or, or something like that, please? My name is Daisy, and my employee number is number 5, the pound sign, and then the dollar sign. Mm -hmm. I'll check what I can do for you. Just wait for my call back within 30 minutes to one hour, okay? Okay, if I don't hear back from you within an hour by 3.17 p.m. Pacific time, what should I do? I assure you that I will be calling you back. Okay. Well, I thank you very much for your time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, thank you. So the supervisor tells me that it's literally impossible to credit those charges back to my account. That doesn't really sound right, does it? When I eventually get a call back from her about half an hour late, she still asserts that it's literally not possible to credit the charges back to my account. I add in the call recording functionality a little bit late into the call, but there's, uh, but here's that recording. Again, note that about one minute into the recording, you can hear her say that by lying to me and telling me that it wasn't possible to refund those charges, she was, and I quote, negotiating. Enjoy. For the recording, I just added in the uh, recording functionality, and what you missed was um, she called me back half an hour late and said that uh, that she still wasn't able to refund or credit any of the charges back to my account. So we are waiting. I said that that wasn't acceptable and um, that she needed to escalate the call further. So that's what we're waiting on. Hello, thank you for waiting. Hello. Yes, uh, we already credited the $82 on the account. Um, within 24 to 48 hours, that credit will appear on the on your ledger, and you can see all you can also see that credit on the next month bill. Okay. Um, why uh, Why were you not able to do it before? Oh, um, we because we tried to negotiate, and um, again, that is a valid charge. But since I advised my manager that there is a recording and you are misinformed, then she's the one who can approve that 82 <clears throat> Okay, number one, as I explained to you, it was not a valid charge. And number two, you're telling me that if I didn't have a recording of that call, you wouldn't have been able to do it. Is that yes, right? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Awesome. Good thing I'm recording this call, too. So there you have it. Comcast lies, tries to steal, lies some more, and covers it all up by claiming to be negotiating. And then they tell me that in addition to all of that, they also would have never even credited the demonstrably invalid charges back to my account if I didn't have a recording of the call where the agent told me that the visit from the tech would be free. So what did we learn today? Well, for one thing, always record your calls with big companies, especially ones that don't give a fuck about you, like Comcast. Here's a pro tip. Use Skype to make any calls to Comcast or other shitty companies, and use MP3 Skype Recorder to record all of these calls automatically. Link in the doobly-doo. Thanks for watching.